Getting everything lined up. Go. We good? We're live. We are live, guys. In the comments below, let us know if you can hear us loud and clear. Uh, today, the game plan is to do a little shipping. Uh, more importantly, show you exactly what is selling for us on both Poshmark and Mercari. And we want to answer all of your questions as they come in. We're going to be both be shipping. But as you can see, Lindsay is keeping track of your questions. So if you have any questions, just start dropping them. Uh, more importantly, I hope everyone is staying healthy and safe. Hope your uh, reselling businesses are still thriving. As always, if there's anything we can do, answer, answer any questions to help you leapfrog some of the mistakes that we have made and get closer to daily wins, please uh, reach out. Ready to rock and roll. Right, everyone from Idaho, Lux Select is listening while in the car headed to the post office. That's cool. We got to do that after. Drive safe, Lux. Uh, Kenny from Tacoma, Washington. Welcome. What up? Mr. Madness is here. From coast to coast. DLJ from PA. Good morning. What up, Pennsylvania? Pennsylvania. Cool. So here we go, guys. Uh, the first pair that we want to show you, these are all pairs that have sold on Poshmark or Mercari, and we will specify as we go through. And um, yeah, That's we're just going to box them up. The first pair, oh yeah, the last thing I want to say, the these are all pairs that have sold from Saturday evening, Sunday into this morning. The first pair are these LL Bean Wellies. These are rain boots. Uh, brand is uh, significant in this situation. You will run across a lot of these types of boots in the thrift, but you want to make sure that they are a good brand. LL Bean is a good brand. There are uh, some pairs that look similar to this that are like Western Chief or some other different brands. They do not sell as well as LL Bean. So Threads and Threads, good morning from Virginia. That's what up? cool. Uh, David from Pingree Grove, Illinois. Oh, and DLJ from PA, his name is Dale. What up, Dale? Hope everyone is staying safe and healthy. Guys, handwritten uh, thank you cards in every single order that we are putting out. Just keep that in mind. Uh, let's see, Cooper, Cooper Kettle, Billy from PA, appreciate the information, just started selling one month ago. Dang, congrats on starting, that's sweet. Game on. Hopefully the floodgates have opened. All right, we got a question. Here we go. Oh, first, Zarek from Miami, Florida. What up? What up from Miami? So Bobby Loves to Thrift says, I have a potential customer. She uh, she cannot check out on Mercari. She's been trying for two days. Where can I direct her? She can't find the help thing. Thanks in advance and good morning. Usually, hmm. usually it's when, when people try with like their PayPal or that comes up with their fraudulent... Yeah, so, <laughs> forgot, camera's over here. So, we've run into a couple scenarios where people have tried to check out. This was on Mercari? Mercari. Has so, been trying for two days. So, uh, this is the good thing about Mercari, is if someone is trying to check out with a fraudulent payment and won't let them uh, do it, they also have to get uh, authorized by Mercari to use a different form of payment, such mm -hmm. as PayPal or something else that's not, for example, their credit card. Um, if they can't do it, it's it's for a reason. It's nothing that you did. Yeah. Um, they have to connect with Mercari to get authorization. Sometimes Mercari denies people using those third-party uh, payment services like PayPal um, if they have a, a a ding on their account or if like something their address could be wrong. Some like their billing address could be incorrect. Um, but it, uh, it should be. I mean, I can't think off the top of my head, I'm not in the Mercari app right now, but where the help button is, but I think you, you should be able to pretty easily direct her to the help. I want to say it's just like top right hand corner of the screen, um, and usually Mercari support is pretty quick to get back to us, at least in our experience. Um, but again, I mean, there's nothing that you need to do different. Um, so I guess just, you know, respectfully trying to give her the information to figure it out on her own and then have her double check all her info, I guess. Here's another thing to keep in mind. Sometimes people will, and I, we're not saying this is going on with that particular buyer, but sometimes people will say, I can't pay, I can't pay, I can't pay. And you, you build that up over the course of a week and you want to get the sale. And then they'll say, okay, why don't you just message me, message me off of the marketplace and we'll get this done. You don't want to ever do that. So... 
well, again, we're not saying that this individual buyer is doing that, but people that do try to scam the marketplace will try to say like, woe is me. Uh, so they'll try to do the similar thing that's happening with that buyer. This tape is so loud. Is the other one quieter? Yeah. Okay, you're gonna say hi to Hey, -oh. What up, Flippy? What up, flipping good? My LeBrons finally sold. They're size 17, bought them for 60, sold for 170. Yeah, the awesome. bigger sizes sometimes take a little bit longer to sell. There's less people that have that big size. Bobby loves to thrift. Um, she can't put her address and says it's scrambled. So you really want to let Mercari handle this and yeah. just move on to the next buyer because that's the best part about being a reseller is letting the marketplace handle these types of situations. When we had our own website, this is the stuff that we had to try to handle and it got it turned into a, a massive headache. So let let Mercari handle it Dapper Tiger saying smash the thumbs up. Appreciate you Dapper Tiger Checking in from Kansas City, Kansas uh, Appreciate you checking in. We'll check out your Poshmark Baldy McGee uh, Threads I had a buyer who needed to take off the extra four digits of their zip code and then it worked Yeah, that's another thing as Lindsay said sometimes it has something to do with their address. Sometimes they have a new form of payment but they have they have their old address so you, yeah. there's things that they gotta they gotta figure out the next pair that we are uh, sold uh is this pair of keen these are keen hiker mids we sell these men's women's oh, i'll get you in the screen men's women's and kids uh keen is a, an absolutely phenomenal brand uh mr manis said how long have you guys been doing it we've been reselling actually it's about to be three years in june it'll be three years we've been uh reselling june of 2017 is when we first started um, okay so rick p said i noticed on mercari that some items have pre-printed labels with first class status while others print priority how does this work it goes by weight so anything on mercari um, that's under a pound if you're shipping through USPS will be first class So what you usually need to do is make sure you go in and put your weight as what it actually is So for most of our shoes, it's two three four pounds depending on if it's a running shoe or a boot or whatever And anything over a pound if you choose USPS will automatically be priority. Boom. Good question um, Daryl said hi guys I want to start selling shoes but don't know where to start should I start buying from thrift stores or shoe outlets so what was it Daryl Daryl that's a really good question uh, we can only share based on our experience and our experience is we started with the shoes in our closet we, we didn't have any money we didn't have any extra money in case we weren't good at this so our best advice is to start with the shoes in your closet and sell them on a local marketplace like Facebook, OfferUp, LetGo. Uh, they some of those marketplaces do offer uh, connecting with connecting you with people, and you have to ship and do all that. But what we did, our first twelve hundred pairs sold were on local marketplaces where there was no fees. Start there, then you're going to get a, a sense of what's working for you and what's not, and then you're going to sell. Start with even one pair of shoes in your own closet. Sell it for $25 and then use that $25 when the thrifts open back up to reinvest in money. All right. So Lori said when selling on Mercari, do you use the Mercari shipping for items over a pound, which is normally $9.99, or do you use Pirate Ship or PayPal? Which one are you not using here? Oh, it doesn't matter. Whichever one is quieter. Um, so Lori, we always ship through Mercari. We don't use a third party um, and we also use USPS. So actually our shipping is typically around $11. Um, we just like the security that Mercari provides if an item gets lost or also when it gets delivered, it's automatically, we automatically get the money if the buyer doesn't rate us within three days. I'm not sure how that works with a third party, but I doubt it's that easy. Yeah, I don't know. Um, but yeah, just for ourselves, for ease of mind, um, we like to just use the shipping right through Mercari. We pay the extra buck or whatever just to not have the hassle. A couple things to keep in mind. Yes, it may be a dollar or two more to use the Mercari prepaid shipping label, but you also, we use USPS because we get free boxes. So if you're using something like Pirate Ship, which is a third party service, or you're using a different like FedEx or UPS, I'm not are all three of those available? FedEx, UPS, or USPS. You, yeah. you can't use those free USPS boxes if you're shipping through FedEx, or if you're shipping through UPS. It's, a, it's illegal to use free USPS boxes to ship through another service. So 
it's it's a balance. We, as Lindsay said, we like the peace of mind of getting free boxes. They they're sent to our house for free, and we all you have to do is print and ship. Yeah. We never have to worry about anything. Uh, you sacrifice your ability to cover yourself if you use a third party shipping service. I'm also curious, and I don't know if anyone has the answer to this. If you use a third party shipper, you're paying for shipping when you're shipping it. Whereas if for some reason um, mm. our pa like the person returns the pair or whatever, we get that money back. Yeah. So or you got to. We you know what I mean. Mercari We're not gets losing it back. out. Yeah, Mercari gets it back. We're not losing the money to ship the pair. For no, you know, for yeah. No so at, this happened. This happened. Uh, someone reached out to us before, and 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 this scenario happened. If if they had used a third party service, the person uh, wanted to return the shoes. Mercari is left in this situation where they're trying to figure out well who's going to actually pay for the shipping back. If you're using shipping within Mercari, you never ever have to worry about that. Right. Yeah. That's what less we're talking to, about. Those to think about. Um, so really quick, New England, Betty Boop. New England, nice, cool. Said happy Monday, everyone. Well, wow, it's so crazy. It's Monday. I forgot. Yeah, true story. Um, Here's the next pair that we want to show you guys as you're looking through. This is a pair of Nike Hyper Dunk Lows. This is actually a men's 15. A lot of people are asking us, you know, what are the best sizes? What sizes sell the best? This is a good time to jump in. If you have a smaller buying budget, and what we mean by that is if your weekly buying budget is less than $250 per week, we recommend sticking to women's sizes seven through nine and a half, men's 10 and a half through 13, and you can trickle in like a youth size six or a youth size seven. If you have a bigger buying budget, over $250 that you can spend consistently every single week, absolutely every size sells. Yeah. We sell a ton of shoes that are men's 13, 14, 15. We've even sold men's 20. But you always, always, always got to check comps. Um, uh, Zarek said, another tip, ask family members if they have shoes they want to get rid of. My mom and sister just gave me about 20 pairs of shoes new or barely worn. That's sweet. That's a yeah. Call. I do that too with like I went through my closet the other day and pulled out like five pairs and I was like, oh, let's sell these. Another thing, uh, I don't know if you guys just saw that. These are a men's size 15 and this is the USPS shoe box. You don't ever want to jam a pair in, but uh, we do have a video showing how we ship shoes. I think people get confused uh, when it comes to this. They think that bigger shoes do not fit in these USPS shoe boxes. Now, if they're bigger or if they're bigger boots, we modify a 1095 box. And again, in that video here on our on our YouTube channel, how we ship shoes, we talk about every single kind of box modification and how to do it. So, full time picker says, "Good morning, everyone. What up? Adventures with R and J. Say hey there from San Antonio, Texas. Thanks what up, Texas? Great info. New resellers for two months. That's sweet. Welcome. Welcome. Um, Closet Nexus had great advice. Thank you." Um, so, oh, here we go. Melanie said, if someone has added a shoe to their bundle on Poshmark, but they don't add anything more um, than that one pair, do you normally send them an offer on that bundle, even though it's one pair? Yes, that's a very, who was that? Melanie. Melanie, that's a very, very good question. Here is how we handle exactly what you're saying. Imagine that someone is walking into your virtual store, it's your closet, uh, and they start saying, oh, I'm interested in this, I'm interested in that, which is what they're doing when they add a pair to the bundle. We usually give it the full 24 hours, because what Poshmark does is, if nothing happens with that bundle, they send you a notification. As the seller, they send you the notification. Someone has created a bundle and it pings in your notifications. We'll wait for that 24 hour notification and no matter how many pairs, if it's one or if it's 10, if it's 20, if it's five, six, we will send an offer then. Some people uh, will send an offer right away. We like to give them time to look through all of our listings and then the reality is that people, sometimes people get distracted. You got kids running around the house, uh, you head off to work, you, you know, I, what, there's a number of things that may happen. They might be waiting for you to make an offer too. They might be waiting. So. Uh, and again, there's different strategies that work and this is what works best for us. Imagine someone walks into a store and that, let's say we sold these pair of Keens, but the, they, they look at this pair of Keens. If you walk right up to them and say, hey, do you want to buy that? Do you want to buy that right away? 
it doesn't give them enough ch time to like look through. So either wait a little bit to see if they add more or uh, because we have, this happens to us literally dozens of times uh, every single day. We wait for that 24 hour notification and then we send an offer. A lot of the times nothing happens when we send the offer, but sometimes they accept the offer or sometimes they counter. You'll never make the sale if you never send an offer on that bundle. Sometimes we'll ask too. I don't know if you said this. We'll ask. Um, yep. Good. I didn't say that. I we'll that. ask. Uh, like, let us know when you're done going through the closet, and we'll send you an offer with discounted shipping or whatever. Um, and then sometimes they just don't say anything, or sometimes they're like, "Okay, I'm all done. Send an offer." Yeah. Uh, so Phoenix, Fli Phoenix Flippers, what's up, guys? Good morning. Um, BCK Resale Co. said, "Good morning, guys. Great job. Good info. Thanks." Carlos says, "Morning, guys." What up? Um, Jody said, "Good morning, guys." What up, Jody? And Timothy asked, "Where did we get our shelves?" So, there's the quick answer is we get all of the shelving from the Christmas tree shop. We've literally been getting the shelving since we started. Uh, you know, almost three years ago and we realized that not everyone is as close to a Christmas tree shop uh, even though they have they have locations everywhere so there is a link in all of our YouTube videos to where you can find them on Amazon they might be a little bit more I know the price changes a little bit the, also here's a quick key about that shelving oh shit hang on <laughs> Wisco thrift thrifter just sent a um... super chat, chat. I was like, what is this called <laughs> Uh, for five dollars, thank you so much. They thank said, you. Thank you for being so open and willing to help your people. I will forever suggest people watch your videos if they're new and want videos to learn from. That means oh, a lot to thank us. Thank you so much. That's awesome. Thank you so much. We try. We try to put out everything. Yeah, we're doing. that's how we learn, guys. We are. We do exactly what you're doing right now. We ask other resellers. We ask uh, people that we meet when we're in the outlets. You know, obviously, you can connect with other resellers in real life. Uh, in uh, off the virtual world but we do what you're doing and we've run into people that have answered all of our questions so we want to just pass on the information that we have learned um corin 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 what is corin uh know, said good it. morning sorry if i pronounced it wrong uh phoenix flippers got his uh shelves on ebay boom cool. there you go always double check uh, matthew said how excited are you guys to thrift again from stores when this whole situation is over from one to ten what's your i want to quickly finish my thought about the shelving because yeah. it's super important don't this is where you can leapfrog the mistakes that we have made and get closer to wins these as you can see well you guys probably can't see it but we use some shoe strings to connect shoe sh shoe strings yeah. and zip ties to connect the shelving together um actually i don't want to move the the camera but we have rows we have three rows uh that are up here in the sneaker loft and then we put them back to back and we connect them uh, to the wall when we can. We also connect them to the panel that goes across. If you just leave them freestanding and you stack them above your head, as you can see we have, uh, there is a chance that they will fall over. You always wanna make sure that they're super secure against the wall or back to back together. What was the question? Scale of one to 10, how excited are you to get back to thrifting? I'll tell you what, it's, uh, We'd be lying if we said we weren't excited to get back. However, that is quickly um, dulled with being safe. Yeah. Uh, I think, and and we don't, we're not, we're not about to tell you any health regulations or the right or wrong way. I think you should make the decision that works best for you. But it's super, super scary how this, uh, what's going on in the world, kind of snuck into all of our lives and how prevalent it actually is. I, I think it's a lot bigger um, in terms of how it can be passed and all this. Again, we don't want to turn this into a health talk, but as soon as it's healthy and safe, we're going to dive back in. And we're not sure exactly when that is. At least in the state of Maine, nothing is planning on opening up. Uh, in terms of thrifts for another month. So we're gonna continue to source online and things of that nature. Quick sale update. Here is a pair of really nice L.L. Bean Waterproof Tech 2.5 Lows. These are a pair of Men's 13. Uh, this actually is a zero buy cost to us. This is in on consignment. We also have a video showing how we've built our consignment business. Consignment meaning uh, someone else has paid for the inventory and you put in all the work to sell it and you guys split the profits. Oh, Bobby loves to thrift sent um, a super chat. Hey, Bobby loves to thrift. Thanks for all the awesome information. Really appreciate you. So let's go. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, 
Threads and Threads said, you guys are awesome. You've been helping me out via DM on Instagram, and I can't thank you enough. You are very welcome. Corinne. Always. Corinne. I, how do you pronounce this? Corinne. 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 <laughs> so I sold 10 pairs of shoes on Poshmark this weekend. hey oh, 10. Tips. Hitting them double digits. Um... When you're sourcing used shoes to check for a funky smell, are you actually sniffing the shoes or are you just being aware if you smell something while looking the shoes over? Very, very good question. Yes, we're smelling the shoes. Uh, yes, you may, I, I'm, you don't stick your, let's use an example. Uh, do not, do not stick your, I'm not gonna do it. Do not stick your whole nose in, but you do the wave test. You can hide it by like, I'm looking at this, give it a big smell. As you can see, we are in our sneaker loft in our apartment. The last thing we want to do is bring home stinky shoes. We have roughly 1900 pairs uh, in here right now. And there is zero smell because that is super important to never ever bring home stinky shoes. Most important, if you, fe if you smell anything that smells like smoke, you the, you'll, you can research all the remedies you want. Do not source shoes that have any smoke smell. And then, uh, believe it or not, you will come across a lot of inventory that does not have a bad smell. Leave all the smelly stuff in the store. So John said, Sneak Jack's here. We've been selling since March 1st and over $3,000 in profit. It works. 3K and you just started in March. Pour gas on that fire. Can I talk about those? Yeah. Nike in season... Uh, TR5s, oh shoot, I haven't been saying where they have sold. These sold on Poshmark, um, quick cleanup job, easy, easy colorway. Uh, obviously, Nike, the Nike brand is very good. One thing I haven't been uh, talking about, besides the um, handwritten thank you note that we put in, Lindsay came up with this really good idea, is we got these super inexpensive, hmm. it just says thank you. <laughs> And it's on, I keep reaching up here, it's on this little roll and we've got it hanging. And we just put that little thank you. It's just another note where uh, when people are opening their package, the first thing they see is a nice little thank you. Then they open it up and see the little thank you note. Goes a long way. Phoenix Flipper sent a $5 super chat. Hey, oh, super chat. chat. Thank you, Phoenix Flippers. Love the Greedy Genius shoes. Thanks for all the free info. Yeah. They were sweet. I'm glad that they went to someone is going to enjoy yeah it. it's funny that you mentioned that we had a bunch of people message us after saying oh i was gonna buy those i was gonna buy those it's the only pair of greedy genius that we've ever found out in the wild yeah those are sweet. and now you own them now we have a good story so eileen said do you ever post the same shoe on more than one marketplace eileen really really good question and the answer is yes right now we everything that we source has good comps on the marketplaces that we are using and what we mean by that is Let's say we sold these pair of Merrill. These sold on Poshmark. Now, these are really nice uh, suede hikers in really, really amazing condition. I'm pretty sure these were part of our consignment as well. Yep. Um, so this was zero buy cost to us, but we know by looking up the completed sales on both Poshmark and Mercari, because those are the marketplaces that we mainly use, that they're selling well. So yes, these were listed on both Poshmark and Mercari. When we first started reselling, we only used Facebook Marketplace, and we built our entire business selling uh, over 1,200 pairs strictly on Facebook Marketplace. Then we started dabbling in other marketplaces. It's super important to not go from zero to 500, meaning, you know what, uh, I only, let's just create an example. I only use Poshmark, but I wanna try Mercari and eBay and let go and all these other things to try all of them and just go brr, brr, all at once because it's gonna get super chaotic. You have to have a system in place that allows you to handle that. So for example, in this in this example, the minute that these pair that pair sold on Poshmark, we run our entire business from our phone, we instantly take off that listing off of Mercari. Because we always have our phones on us, it's very, very easy to keep track and we're very diligent and disciplined about doing that. If you want to start using other marketplaces, create systems and try one, add one, and then build it until you're comfortable, and then add another if you want and build comfortable. You can have a super profitable business just using one marketplace, but of course, you'll have more eyeballs on your inventory. Just make sure you're thinking about your sanity and not going on 10 marketplaces at once. So Delshawn Hayes said hello from Kentucky. What up, Kentucky? Cool. 
Um, David asked, was, was there ever a time when you guys were discouraged and you wanted to give up? How did you push through the adversity mentally and keep moving forward? Yeah, so in the very beginning, uh, we went full time on day one and we had to pay all of our bills in the first month. And so at least for me, the first thing that was really great was that we did pay all of our, our bills in that first month of June of 2017. But then we started to get discouraged and here is why. We started comparing ourselves to other resellers. We were jumping on Instagram, we were on YouTube, we were researching, we were trying to figure out how we could get better. And we saw all these people shipping out 10s and 20s, uh, 20 bundles of boxes, like all these shoes. We were only selling like one or two pairs a day. And so we started to, at least I started to get a little discouraged. Then we talked about it and then we said, what are we doing? Like we just started, we're in month one. Yes, we're discouraged, but like we paid all of our bills this month. So we immediately stopped comparing ourselves to other resellers and we said, all right, here's what we did in June. Let's try to beat that in July and not worry about comparing ourselves and doing all these other things. And then it started to snowball and multiply the effect that we had on just trying to beat what we did yesterday. It sounds cliche, it might sound corny and kumbaya, but holy smokes, we weren't discouraged anymore because we started, instead of selling one pair a day, we started selling two and three pairs a day and then it grew into what we have today. That is our, our story. There's lots of things that can discourage you, but the cool thing about being a reseller and especially full-time resellers doing this together, we're 100% in charge of what happens in our world, yeah. both the wins and the losses. Whoa! Carlos! Carlos! Uh, 999. What? Um, <laughs> 999. Whoa! Super chat! 999! You guys are awesome. Thanks for being so open and always sharing what's working for you. Appreciate you, always Carlos. You do. That means the world yeah, to us. That's awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And on that note, here is a pair of Toms. These are a pair of women's size seven embroidered Toms. Some Toms sell, some Toms do not. We do the best uh, when it comes to women's Toms that have a really cool design as opposed to the just traditional one color. Also, this is a little bit heavier. You can't tell, obviously, this is video, but this is a little heavier than uh, a normal Tom's. There's a little bit more to it. It's got an extra embroidery on it. These Tom's sold on Poshmark. Um, Adventures with R and J said we hit six thousand dollars in gross sales between eBay and Posh in just two months. That's insane. That's really cool. I don't think, uh, yeah, six grand in two months. You're ahead of where we were. Um, Beatrice said, hi, you guys. I just started watching you guys. are awesome. Um, you guys are smart. Thank you so much for the kind Wish words. Wish the best as your business grows. Be safe. You too. Um, <laughs> Denny said, hello, guys. Good morning. If you made a if you made $15,000 sales on StockX, do I need to file tax? And should I apply for a business permit for online permit in California? So here's the short answer. We can't give you the best uh, answer because it, things vary between state, uh, state and federal, but then they also vary between, like you said, you're in California, we're in Maine. There might be some intricacies that are different. So the best advice we can give you is to connect you with someone on Instagram. He is a certified uh, CPA that works specifically with resellers. And on Instagram, his name is not your dad's CPA. Uh, connect with him on Instagram. Again, it's not your dad's CPA and ask all of your tax questions. He absolutely can give you the best advice when it comes to those types of scenarios. Um, but for the record, uh, yes, you need to claim all of oh, your yeah. income. Yeah. Um, so anything, again, I can't remember the total, but it's like, I don't know, a couple it thousand changes. dollars yeah. or something. Um, but yes, you need to claim your income and you will need to pay taxes on it. Um, that amount will vary, but... There's been a lot of people on this feed that have talked about, hey, I'm just getting started. I'm just getting started. Here's a huge, uh, some huge advice. Keep track of absolutely everything. Buy cost, what you're selling it for, all of those things. We just use a simple Google Sheet. It's a free app on our phone. It doesn't have to be crazy intricate, but just keep track of everything. It, it is super, super helpful. We figure out our taxes quarterly yeah. and then put that money aside. And then at the end of the year, we've already got that money ready to rock and roll. We file our taxes and pay that money. Wait, Phoenix Flippers hey had eight pairs go out this weekend. Eight pairs. That's Sweet. a phenomenal weekend. Congratulations yeah, on the pairs. success. The next pair we want to show you uh, is a pair of Keen. These are like hiking sandals. These got the little glittery because these are youth. 
We do really, really well with these types of sandals, men's, women's, and youth. This is a youth size too. Another point of uh, value is a lot of the times when you find these keen sandals in the thrift, this size tag will be rubbed off. We always pass if you can't, with any footwear, if you can't legibly read and take a photo and show a potential yeah. buyer the inside size tag, we always pass. Now, of course, there's gonna be people that say, oh, you need more boxes. There's gonna be people that say that uh, you can sell shoes with no size tag, and that is true. However, in the long term, if people see that you're selling shoes that have blemishes or no official size tag or all those things, they start to think that there might be something wrong with all of the shoes that you sell. It's just that fine line. Do you want the one sale or do you want the continued uh, sales over and over by the same buyer? Also, it prevents, uh, when, when you can legibly show the inside size tag, it prevents potential returns. No matter how many, how well you describe the shoe. Well, um, Havana said, lots of love from Guam. Hey, -o, check it in from Guam. That's cool, we've shipped, we've shipped a pair of shoes, I think through Poshmark or something to Guam. Really? Yeah. What up from Guam? Hope the weather is nice. Very cool. All right, here is uh, LL Bean is probably. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Hey, -o. Kenny, Kenny Callahan sent a nineteen ninety nine. Whoa, Kenny! Ninety nine. Um, Thank you so much, Kenny. Said, Just a small piece of appreciation for directly impacting my shoe reselling. Not enough words to express the gratitude. Oh my gosh, that's so nice. Yo, we've enjoyed talking with you on Instagram, Kenny. Thank you so much. That's cool. Uh, for not only the kind words, for the super chat, but for continuing to build alongside us. We're, one thing I hope you guys realize is we're all in this together. It's not us versus you or you versus your neighbor. Uh, there's enough inventory and there's enough room to go around, which is why we share all this information for free. Uh, there's literally enough marketplaces, enough inventory. Kenny, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. It and, means a um, lot. Fat Elvis, good, said so happy Monday. What up, Fat Elvis? Uh, Elvis. <laughs> of course, I want to say Fat Albert. <laughs> yeah. That was a great cartoon. Here is a pair of tumbled leather black L.L. Bean uh, they're winter boots, and as you guys know, winter is over. However, we've been <laughs> we've been watching the news, and of course, they trickle in. Uh, the, you guys can't see it right now, but in Maine, it's beautiful, it's gorgeous. These 60s. these sold on Poshmark, by the way. Much However, better. there's a freaking snowstorm coming. What the what? Yeah, they were saying on the news that. New York City went from 80 degrees over the weekend to 30 degrees this coming weekend. That's crazy. Yeah. The Northeast the, is wild. I'm sure this is uh, cliche in a lot of states, but, you know, they say in Maine, if you don't like the weather, just wait five minutes. Uh, guys, we literally could be out, like, tanning and, and chilling, and there's, this, there's more snow coming. The point of me saying all that is that's why we're still selling winter boots. Those sold on Mercari. I'm sorry, I said they to sold on Poshmark. someone in New York. They're he, probably true, waiting for the snow this True weekend. story. Now, here is something. Uh, this, this brand is called Zoot. Now, this is, these are the Ultra TT 7.0. These sold on Poshmark. We have come across these a couple times. We have sold a couple pairs, but these are a much slower sell-through. So you have to weigh out what your business model is. Uh, this is probably the, the slowest brand uh, when it comes to our sell-through rate. It does not sell very quickly. They do sell. We don't come across them very much, but the brand is called Zoot. Oh, this is cool. Um, Adventures with R and J said we scooped up grandma's shoe cleaner. hey <laughs> Um, The clamp lamps and shoe trees pictures of shoes have been much better that's awesome happy that that's exactly what we use yeah. we use grandma's we use the clamp lamps as you said everything we oh, share guys it. yeah yeah is based on what we're doing yeah our setup is really simple and can easily be replicated and again all of that all the stuff we use all of the cleaner and the lights and the shelves and anything like that um, you can go to any of our YouTube videos and we put a list of the links to Amazon um, where it can be purchased. Boom. Here's another pair of L.L. Bean. 
Nike is our number one most selling brand. L.L. Bean is our second most selling brand. Obviously, L.L. Bean is based out of Maine. They have their, their global headquarters. Uh, even though it's a global brand and sold all over the world, uh, we have access to it. They donate to local thrifts. Uh, people buy directly from the headquarters here and then um, you know donate them. So we have better access than a lot of people around the country. Um, but just a heads up, if you can come across L.L. Bean, look for this little tag when it comes to the hikers. You guys can't really see it right here, but this says Waterproof Tech 2.5. It just makes it a lot easier to show potential buyers, um, just reiterating that they're waterproof. Dragon Value Home said hello from sunny California. Whoa, checking in from Cali. If you guys didn't know, here's a little future pop quiz. This beautiful lady right here was born in California. I was. Guess the town. Guess the town in the comments below where she was born. We've talked about it. <laughs> I was just going to say a movie quote. It rhymes with... Are they, are they guessing? <laughs> no. no one's guessing. It's delayed. Dragon, where, where in California... Pop quiz. We've talked about it before. Where was... Oh, where was... <laughs> Lindsay born in California name the city um, JT said you guys are my life goals not only in business but in life you're both so awesome in every way oh my god appreciate you JT so nice. that is really really nice of you we're just happy we're just living our lives exactly how we want to live them yeah it doesn't mean that bad stuff happens in our doesn't happen in our life it doesn't mean we have uh, don't have really tough days it just means that we know we're in control. We both used to have jobs where it wasn't in our control. And if we were having a bad day, we had to go into work or we had to ask someone else permission to like, if, oh, I, I need the day off because I'm just not in a good mood or something happened to my family. I got to go. Now it's easier to get through those situations because we are 100 percent in control. There's days where we're both like just not feeling it and we'll just shut off and watch movies all day. Like or, yesterday. We watched, um... We weren't feeling bad. Oh, yeah. yeah. We, but we watched I See You, which is pretty good. Oh, yeah, the movie I See You. Um, Keen. Wait, wait, wait. First guess from Eileen, San Diego. Nailed it. <laughs> Eileen, you nailed it. <laughs> you Lindsay win. was born in San Diego. Yeah, that's funny. Hope First everyone guess. is staying healthy wait, and safe. Sorry, I interrupted you. I just showed real quick. The pair I just showed was a, a youth pair of Keen. We already talked about the brand. Youth pair of Keen, men's, women's, youth, uh, brand Keen sells really, really well. Um, so David asked, how do you guys pay out the money to people who have um, shoes that sell on consignment? Yeah, so uh, the, the biggest consignment account we have, we pay out cash. And that's because the individual is local here in Maine. Um, that's just his preference. We have done uh, PayPal, we've done Cash App, we've done Venmo. Uh, and there's a whole array of different scenarios depending on the quantity, depending on what the shoes are, depending on what the sale, the ASP, the average sale price is. And that's all predetermined before the actual sale happens. I'll give you a couple examples uh, as we show another pair that has sold. Here is a youth pair of Vans. Vans, obviously, you guys, uh, if you don't know, Vans is a, a very, very good brand to pick up in the thrift. You always want to make sure that there's no rips or tears. Men's, women's, and youth sell really well. So we've had all types of scenarios. For example, we've had, um, we our cut is 25% of the sale price. We've had 50-50 uh, split of the profit after all fees. We've also had 50-50 split of after all fees minus the buy cost. So if we sell a pair for 100 bucks on Poshmark, we get back $80. If their buy cost was $20, between 20 and 80, that means we've got $60 left. We each, we each get 30 bucks and then they get their, their buy cost back. We do have a video sh talking all about this uh, right here on our YouTube channel. It's, uh, what was it? It's called like how to get free shoes mm -hmm. and how to build your consignment business. You just gotta scroll down. Um, all right, so Reggie said, love everything that you all do. I replicate it. Appreciate um, you, Reggie. Uh, keep pushing. As always, love the energy, the facts, and honesty. That's all you're going to get, guys. We're, all, we're only going to share. We're never going to tell you something that we have not done ourselves. And more importantly, we want you to leapfrog some of the mistakes that we have made and get closer to daily wins.
Um, closet Nexus said, do you ever have trouble getting a connection in stores when trying to check comps? I do. Yes. So, well, Nexus? Closet Nexus. Closet Nexus. That's a really, really good question. The answer is yes. Here's exactly what we do. We will take a photo of the shoe or we will take note of exactly what the shoe is. So here's another pair that we sold. This is a pair of these Merrill slip-on. We actually got these at Burlington. Um, they were, these were on sale at a really, really good price. These sold on Poshmark. So let's say we are in a Burlington or a Thrift or a Marshalls or an outlet and we don't have good service. We'll either take a picture or jot down in our phone what the shoe is and then we'll go out We'll leave the shoe there, obviously, and we'll go out and we'll find Wi-Fi and we'll look up those comps. You might sound that's crazy. You might say uh, that takes too long. You might take, but that's the most important part of being a reseller is understanding what the pair or the item is selling for on the marketplace that you're using before you buy it. Here's what doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense to guess and then get home and then realize that the comps aren't good, it's not selling for. So let's say this pair was 10 bucks and you don't have Wi-Fi and you're like, oh, it's a hassle. I don't want to go out and find Wi-Fi and come back and blue other stuff. And you come home and you find out that this pair is only selling for 10 bucks on the marketplaces you're using, you've now wasted your money. The most important part about being a reseller is knowing what a pair is selling for before you spend your hard-earned money on it. So in those scenarios, it's far and few between. Most of the time we do have service, but when we don't, we either take photos or put a note in our phone. We'll go to the local food court or you know whatever, and we'll when we have Wi-Fi, and we'll look up all the comps, and then if it's good, we'll go back and buy them. If it's not, we won't. A lot of stores now have their own Wi-Fi. Yeah, that's true. Of, like outlets and burlington's and stuff like that these days or like the mall or wherever will have its own wi-fi double check or go to a window here is a pair of new balance 775 v3s we sell an absolute ton of new balance these sold on poshmark uh literally men's women's and youth we've even sold like a a youth a, a youth three wide oh yeah youth. like i thought you were gonna say a little yeah, we sold, sold infant tiny ones. Um, they sell really well on Poshmark and Mercari. Um, Dragon said, I see you're not using a thermal printer. Why tape labels? Yeah, this is where we get this question almost daily. Uh, here's the, don't, if it's not broke, don't, don't fix it, that type of thing. Where when we first got into doing a lot of shipping, we didn't have money to spend on a thermal printer. Um, and so we got an inexpensive uh, printer. Actually, we're still using it three years later uh, from the thrift. Then we looked at thermal. We run our entire business from our phones. So uh, we needed a wireless printer. The printer that we got at the thrift is wireless. Uh, it was golden. We actually don't even own a computer. So we were doing all we were just we just print the label from our phone. Then we started looking into thermal printers and we couldn't find any thermal printer that was less than $200 that was wireless. Then we started looking at the actual money spent. We still haven't even spent $200 on ink, on paper, and this printer in the almost three years that we've had it. And most thermal printers that are wireless, I mean, I'm sure you can find a used one and all that, cost more than 200 bucks. So we've never you had to it. buy the labels. And then you got to buy the labels. And then we see people talking about the headaches with them and all this. And we haven't had any issues with our printer. So we just haven't had, a, had, we haven't had to buy one. So these are the shelves. A lot of people are still asking us about the shelves. This is what it looks like. It's a box. And as you can see, we get them at Christmas tree shop and we get them for 10 bucks for six, like a six shelf. Nine ninety nine. There's also like <clears throat> 10 shelves for 20 or 19.99. Um, but again, in our YouTube videos, we've put links to where you can get similar ones on Amazon. Um, the price fluctuates, but usually it's like 30 bucks for a 10 shell for 25 bucks or, you know, the, the prices go up and down. But again, the link is in most of our YouTube videos for where you can get them on Amazon. The if least you don't have a Christmas tree shop or if your Christmas tree shop is not open currently. That's all we like. That's where we go to is because we, that's the least expensive that we have found. Here's another pair of New Balance. These sold on Poshmark. These are the 695 V2. 
Uh, a lot of New Balance either on the tongue or on the heel is where you can find the style. You need more. Um, so David asked personal question because I'm curious, what are both of your educational backgrounds? Yeah, we both have college degrees. Yeah, we both have our bachelor's degrees. Mine is in art therapy. Ryan's is in what, business? So it's called international business. Or inter yeah. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah, we both have, you know, we both got our college degrees. And to be honest with you, uh, it's a hindsight is 2020. Had a lot of fun in college, but uh, the amount of debt that I got into, at least me personally, um, did not equate to me using my college degree. Plus, present day, like, I haven't needed my college degree. I've, I've used it, I've put it on resumes and all that, but I make, we make way more money now than we ever had at any corporate job. Um, where we would have needed to have that college degree. I think it's it's evolved now in a 2020 world, especially now with everything that has gone on, that the money it costs to get that education in a general sense is is not worth it. If you're specific, you know, lawyer, doctor, um, or if you're very specific with all that stuff, I could go on for an hour about this. Um, it does make sense to go through the, you know, however long it takes through college and four and eight and 12 years and all that. But that's that's another... Scenario. Here is a pair of our Ariat Mary Janes. Uh, these are it's another really really good brand. They make oops, where's the the inside tag? Ariat's a really good brand. They make some phenomenal boots. All their footwear is actually really well made. These sold on Poshmark. We sell a ton of Ariat. A R I A T. <laughs> We started because we found um, a lot of their like Western style boots. They have some really cool, bright colored um, Western style leather boots, but yeah. they have a lot of um, like clogs. I'm trying to see if there's another pair around here. A lot of clogs and things of that nature too that do well for us. Here is a pair of Timberland boots. We just sold these on Poshmark. We do really well with men's and women's uh, Timberland. Timberland's a, a phenomenal brand. Most of their footwear, uh, dare I say all of their footwear is waterproof. No. Not all. Most of it is waterproof. Anytime you can, you have footwear that is waterproof, obviously that's a super bonus. Uh, we also talk about this all the time. Gore-Tex. Gore-Tex is gold. Uh, if it's Gore-Tex line, these are not Gore-Tex line, but can you go? Sorry, I don't know how to say this. Ram, Ramchand. Ramshawn Francisco. Ramchand. Um, said hello, Renzi. Big fan here. Currently stationed in Germany. That's Whoa! My, we don't sprechen Sie Deutsch. My uh, question is, did sales increase or decrease because of the lockdown? So uh, that's a really good question. Um, to, the answer is, in the beginning, the first month, uh, 45 days, nothing changed. And then it went down a little bit. Uh, we also, our sourcing has drastically decreased uh, because we're still sourcing online and then flipping back onto the marketplaces, but we're just not bringing in as much inventory as we were. Uh, so, for example, we were right around 25 to 29, 30 pairs sold per day, and now we're right around uh, 15, 16 to 20 pairs on average per day. So, yes, it has declined. But we're still uh, chugging along. We're still bringing inventory in. We still have stuff trickling in almost on a daily basis. We're getting that stuff listed uh, right away. So there's lots of things that you can still do. The long answer long is yes, sales have gone down a little bit. But still, with that said, we're still paying all of our bills and then still putting money away into our extra, you can call it a savings account, you can call it a real estate account, you can call it an emergency fund. Uh, we're still able to put money away each and every single week. Um, so Reggie said that Walmart also sells similar racks. Cool. cool. Thanks then, for the uh, heads up, Reggie. Uh, Closet Nexus asked if we picked up kid sizes. Closet Nexus, great question. When it comes to kid sizes, our experience, and, and let me give you the 20-second story, we used to pick up almost any pair of like infant little kid size shoes and then bundle them together. We would sell like five or six pairs in one bundle. Uh, had a little bit of success, but there was more labor and more uh, than the money was coming in. The profits didn't equate to the labor. Now what we have found uh, almost three years in is our the most success we have with infant and kids shoes 
is the shoes that have an adult version. I think, uh, here's a perfect example. We're gonna show these a little bit later. Oh my God. These are infant Converse. I mean, palm of your hand. These are infant size five, like tiny, little, so can't believe there's feet this small and there's there's smaller, but these clearly have an adult version. So it's been our experience, you know, baby Jordans, uh, baby basketball shoes, you know, that have, have the adult version. Things of that nature do better for us and sell for a higher price singularly. You don't have to bundle all these shoes together. That's our experience. Um, Timothy asks, what do you think of Under Armour shoes? We sell Under Armour. As always, check the comps. Uh, the better Under Armour are the Curry collaborations. You know, Curry has uh, the basketball shoes. We've sold a ton of those. We have done a lot of in-store, a lot of, we've done uh, a few in-store flips in the Under Armour outlet. You can sell right onto StockX and right onto Goat while you're in store. Um, we have a video about how to do that here on our YouTube channel as well. Uh, but it's not, I don't think Under Armour is in our top 10 brands sold. Quantity wise. Quantity wise, yeah. It's definitely a brand that we sell every single month. Here's a pair of Solomon the Speed Form. XA Pro. Speed Form. The Under oh, Armour yeah, Speed yeah. Forms sell really well for us. Um, obviously, you want to check completed sales and check condition because um, they're a running shoe. But we've sold quite a few pairs of that model of Under Armour in particular, and they've all sold relatively quickly as well. Yeah. yeah. I'm behind on the boxes over here. These, uh, oops, sorry. So those sold on Poshmark. Let's do these little infant shoes. Yeah, yeah. they're so cute. You guys saw those Converse that we just showed you. Uh, all, all the same things apply. You still want to make sure that they're in really good condition. Uh, you know, these are immaculate that you can, you can clean them up. They're still really, I mean, a child is going to grow out of these really quickly, but uh, they still sell. I believe these sold for $25 or $30. Um, $29 on Poshmark. And they still get a handwritten Look at the thank note you note. Than the, shoes are. the note is literally. Again, if you guys have any questions, keep putting them in the comments below. We've got about six or seven, eight pairs left to ship. Also, let us know if this type of interactive video, well, that we show you what we're shipping while we're shipping it, um, is beneficial for you. Achilles said, um, how do we do consignment with y'all? I have some Hoka shoes I need to sell, and do y'all sell used clothes on consignment, like Miss Me jeans? Yeah. No, we. so to answer your question about the clothes, we don't sell any clothes. Uh, we only stick to footwear. Uh, I'm sure there's either people in the feed right now that might take you up on the clothes or you can reach out. There's lots of people on Instagram. There's also places where you can actually send the clothes in. Um, and right now, in terms of consignment, we're looking for just larger quantities. Uh, you know, people who have 50 pairs, 100 pairs, 500 pairs. Oops. Um, and especially when it comes to Hoka's, you should have no problem selling Hoka's. Yeah. yeah, you could list them on any platform and sell them. Quickly. Yeah, 49. I mean, as long as there's no rips or tears, they still have good tread, original insoles, uh, you know, legible size tag, all those things. You should have no issues selling your Hoka's. Reach out to us on Instagram. We can help you um, based on the condition and, and style that you have. Here is a pair of really cool embroidered Vans. Uh, these sold on... Poshmark. They're actually heading to another city here in Maine. Hmm. Even with a uh, kick and flip set, even with OA, your average cost is ten dollars. Yeah. So if if you we do have, for example, we when we're doing OA, when we're doing RA, uh, what that means is when we're doing online arbitrage, buying everything online, or when we're doing RA retail arbitrage, going out to the thrifts, we do a seven day buying period. So over the course of seven days, we buy a lot of shoes. We keep our average buy cost under ten dollars. Now, as always, you want to buy shoes in the best condition possible at the lowest possible price. So it's a little bit harder with OA because you have shipping costs and you have uh, fees of those marketplaces countered in. But if you look at our video, how to buy shoes, how to buy and sell shoes from home here on YouTube, we show you how, can, how you can use the filters to look for pairs that are less than $10 with free shipping. 
They are out there. You're going to have to look through hundreds and hundreds of pairs to find pairs that do make sense. But on a daily basis, we are finding inventory that, yes, all in are less than $10. Um, so Rick said, do you customize your thank you notes? So what we do is I will write up, I don't know if you can see it, a ton of these and they basically say we hope you enjoy the video sending our best from Maine to wherever and we'll put um whatever state the person is buying from on here so we personalize it just a little bit um so people you know know that we're taking our time and actually looking at their sale um, just one or two sentences them. handwritten uh i used to write them and it worked it worked the same but Lindsay's handwriting is way way better uh mary asked what platform do you sell the most shoes so every pair of shoes, what was that Mary? Mary. Mary, thank you for the question. Every pair of shoes that we, to give you an idea, every pair of shoes that we source gets listed on Poshmark and Mercari. Uh, we've sold over $275,000 in shoes on Poshmark and we've sold over $70,000 in shoes on Mercari with the same exact inventory, mm -hmm. just to give you a sense. So right now, uh, Poshmark, it, we sell more Probably because you can be more active and engaging on Poshmark with the same exact inventory. We still sell a ton on Mercari. Here's a pair of really cool suede Puma Lows that are going out. These sold on Poshmark. We do really well with Puma in both men's and women's. Uh, as always with any of these brands, you want to make sure you're checking the comps and you want to check the comps based on the condition they are in on the marketplace that you are using. And those of you who are wondering what I keep reaching over, we have a we have a shelf above where the camera is right here. It's about head level that we pre-make all the boxes. Uh, usually we do it like twice a week. We get the whole shelf filled. And then as we're going throughout the week, uh, we use those boxes. It just helps um, ship quicker. So David asked, have you ever bought something on Mercari and then the seller did not put enough postage on the box so you had to pay extra for shipping? Happened to me a few times trying to source OA. I don't think that's happened to us. That has not happened to us, um, but I will be honest and say <clears throat> that when, because we sell on Mercari and we know how much it costs to, to ship shoes through the app on Mercari, if we see a listing and the buyer is charging the seller, the seller is charging the buyer under like $10 for shipping, we always take note and be like, that shipping is not going to be the correct weight that we might end up having to pay more when we get it and we usually pass on buying the pair unless it makes sense to also have to pay extra but you yeah can be aware of that but also if the um seller has not if the seller has paid the shipping and hasn't put a, a label on that weight enough they should be charged through mercari for the difference in shipping that's how mercari works if they've paid through mercari for shipping put a two pound label it actually needed a three pound label so there's a two dollar difference or whatever it is they'll charge the seller the shipping um but if you're paying the shipping to begin with and then it's not enough then you have to pay it yeah and on the the not so fun talk about reselling there are some sellers out there that will try to scam you they'll they'll say oh the shipping's only you know but this thing only weighs 0.25 pounds so here's the shipping and if you are paying shipping yes you are going to be uh accountable for that we have heard people like as you say where they they get charged the shipping and a lot of sellers that are trying to take advantage of you know that they're pr providing a price point that's lower however you're gonna have to pay more in the end and it's it's harder to say no to a package when it's right there at your door and then you say oh, i just want them anyway rather than saying no send them back so just take that and like Lindsay said we're preemptive and we say hey we we're shoe resellers we know how much this should be and there's no way that you're gonna ding an extra 10 bucks when it when it hits our doorstep um so here's a good question from eileen if you have a listing on Posh and Mercari, you sell it on Mercari and try to delete it from Posh, Posh won't let you delete it if you have an active offer. What do you do about that? So fun trick. Very good question was Eileen. Mm -hmm. Eileen, very, very good question. Here is the trick. Here's what you do. It's sold on Mercari. You go back into Poshmark. It won't let you delete it. You go into that listing. You hit edit in the top corner. You change the size of that pair of shoes. And then you hit list. And then you go into that listing and you delete it. You've essentially changed the listing so there's no more uh, active offer on that listing and you now are able to delete it. Again, it's sold on Mercari. You go back into Poshmark. 
you hit edit, you change the side, you size, you relist it, and then you go immediately back into that listing and delete it. That's how you do it. Yeah. Here is a brand that we sell a ton of. These are the brand is called Nurse Mates. We sell a bunch of clogs. Uh, this is a healed clog. We sell a bunch of regular clogs. Um, the big thing with them is they're usually slip resistant. It'll say it right on the bottom. Yeah. Um, and so we make sure slip to put resistant. that usually right in the title because that's something that a lot of people will um, search for. Slip of, like, resistant. Yeah. Also, uh, a thing about nurse mates is usually the size is in the heel rather than, not all the time, but sometimes it's in the heel. So if you're looking where a normal size tag is and you're like, oh, I don't see it, I don't see it. So it's in, on some of the styles, it's in the heel. Um, Achilles said, asked if we sell uh, pairs for over 100 on eBay. No, we don't sell anything on eBay. Um, and before you guys ask, it's because we don't enjoy the platform. Um, it doesn't work with our mental real estate as far as fees and keeping track of that and all the headaches of customer service. So we stick with the marketplaces we like, and you should too. Always, always use the marketplaces you enjoy. The reality is you can win big on all of them. So it only makes sense to use the ones you enjoy. You don't have to use a certain marketplace. We learned through trial and error. We used to use eBay and then realized there was just way more headaches than we wanted to deal with. But you can build a monstrously profitable business on eBay. Ah, this is so cool. Um, so revive this noob. Said a nineteen ninety nine. Hey, oh, thank, thank you, you so much. So much, but this is cool too. Said thanks for all the info, guys. Very much appreciated. I'm a full time plumber in New York and decided to resell shoes part time now just for extra money. Wish me luck, lol. Excited to source in stores once everything is safe. That's so cool. First of all, thank you so much for your service. It made sound interesting to like a plumber is crucial, especially now during these crazy times. I know that you haven't been able to do your thing. It means that a lot to us, especially connecting with people from New York where it's been the absolute hardest hit, uh, essentially in the globe, uh, to hear success stories coming out of really trying times means so much to us. We're always sending you our best. Always reach out if you have any questions and continue to share how you are winning. And thank you so much for the super chat. Here is a pair of Saucony. We sell a ton of Saucony. This is the Lancer 2. Saucony, Saucony, however you want to pronounce it. It's a, a, a very sought after brand. Mostly, there are some lifestyle shoes that Saucony makes that we sell. Uh, mostly it's running shoes. Um, so Justin asked how we've, if we've ever bought bulk, so over like 500 pounds of shoes from a thrift, we're considering doing it since it's 20 cents per pound, but worried about not getting great shoes. What's your thoughts? Yeah, so that we've never done that exact thing. Um, we have bought bulk from people. Here's our scenario. You, you, want, you want to be as strict as always, even though the price might make sense, the product may not. Mm. Now, again, leapfrog our mistakes. We have bought wholesale off of people and immediately found out that it was not worth it um, because of the quality. We don't want to sacrifice our quality yeah. just because the price is better. You are running a business. You are, you're, let me talk about us. We're not in the business of storing shoes. Yes, we have a sneaker loft, and yes, there's 1,900 pairs up here, but we are constantly selling through that inventory, so it's constantly coming in and going out. We're not in the business of storing shoes for a long period of time. So what, why I'm saying that is a lot of the times, at least in our experience, when you're searching through these wholesale lots, the price might be amazing, and yes, you get it right sent to your door, but 80 to 90% of that stuff is not worth it. So now you're stuck with either cleaning a bunch of stuff that won't sell really well or throwing away a bunch of stuff. Now, that's not to say that if you come across a big lot and 10% of it is not good, that you might want to evaluate that. You just have to be very honest with yourself, even though it's really um, intriguing. I don't know how many times, literally hundreds of times we've researched the manifest of wholesale orders and after looking through we're like man i wit this price is amazing yeah. even with the shipping even with everything but the product just does not match what our goals are again you don't want to bring in a shit ton of inventory that you're making a dollar or two even after you've cleaned it and all this 
you have to weigh out the pros and cons of that. So we can't give you an example bit. We don't know what that manifest looks like. And manifest is just like a list of everything. If you're not getting a manifest of everything that's cl included, that's a big red flag. They should be proud of what they are selling. Uh, a lot of the times you run into a scenario where they just want to dump a bunch of inventory on you and get rid of it. Then you have a bunch of crappy inventory. So there are good situations out there, but there's more bad than good. Um, so Dragon Value Home is a nurse. So thank you Ooh, so, thank you much, so for much for everything that you're doing. That's incredible. And out in California too, we know that they've been hit hard as well. Thank so you for being a thank nurse. Thank you. That's awesome. And anyone else that's on here that's doing any type of essential anything. A nurse. It could literally be anything. Delivery person, whatever. Delivery person in the grocery store. Uh, you know, it's any kind of driver, bus Sanitation driver. Like worker. that's absolutely. My father is a postman oh, uh, God, down yeah. in Florida. Every day he's out there in full mask and and delivering. Uh, he's got a route where he's driving around, and every single day I'm always checking in, like how you doing, how you doing, and he's uh, he he smiles and he's got his mask on, and uh, just really do appreciate all of the people who are literally on the front lines. Um, so Mary said this video is super helpful. Love the content. Hope you guys keep doing this kind of video. Thanks so much for being so helpful and teaching everyone what you know. Thank you for the feedback, Mary. We do appreciate that. Uh, David asks, what is the average profit you make on each shoe? David, really good question. Uh, our goal with every single shoe is to have multiple game plans for profit on that shoe. What we mean by that is we obviously want to make the most that we can while selling it as quickly as possible. That's just our business model. There's lots of different business models. Um, a lot of the times we sell through our inventory at four or five X our money. So if it costs 10, we get back a $50 bill or if it costs 10, we get back a $40 bill. Uh, our worst case scenario is to get back twice the money that we spent. We double our money after all fees. So if it costs 10 bucks, let's keep using that example. We get back worst case scenario, a $20 bill after fees and taxes and all things of that nature. You can come up, any profit is good, especially if you're starting off. If you make a dollar, we were just having this conversation with someone, if you make a dollar on a pair of shoes, it's a profit and you've learned something. You, do, you obviously want to continuously increase your profit margin while also keeping an eye on your sell through rate. It doesn't, for us, it doesn't make sense to buy a pair for $10 and then hold it for a year and get back $20. It also doesn't, for us, doesn't make sense to buy a shoe for $10 and then have it sitting up in our sticker loft for an entire year and get back $100. Because that in that same amount of time, we can take that money that we get on the 20, 30, 40, $50 flip and turn it into a thousand quicker than if we sat and waited and waited. Now there is another business model where you buy shoes and you wait and wait and wait and wait and wait and wait for the market to go up and wait and wait and wait and then eventually sell it and that's okay too. You just gotta figure out what works best for you. Our business model, what works best is selling it within 90 days, worst case scenario, getting back twice the money that we spent on it. Okay, so this is a good, oh, I just ripped all my hair out. Um, <laughs> Careful. Your question, like, take my hair. Fernanda asked, are having a lot of luck sourcing fall slash winter boots now, shall I list now or wait until September? That's a good question. That's a, that's a really good question. We would get it listed right away because all summer long we sell winter boots. Um, all winter long we sell sandals. And what you're seeing right now as you head into the summer months is that you can get, there's a few things that I want to say about this. You can get for example, heavy winter boots at a discounted price at all these thrifts, obviously because it's harder to sell. You have to keep in mind your storage. We have a sneaker loft and so yes, all year long we're bringing in sandals and winter boots and all those things because we have a, we've built up, we make the most out of every square foot. So if you have the storage and, it, and you're not turning into a hoarder where it's like in your kitchen and in all these places, um, then absolutely game on. You have to weigh out your storage versus because it also winter boots don't sell as quick in the summer as they do in the winter, but they do sell. We do not recommend waiting to list them. Get everything listed. You will be surprised. There are people that are like, oh, I just want to get it off my mind. I want my winter boots now. We also ship winter boots to Florida and we ship sandals to Alaska. The other thing is um, because of the platforms we use, especially Poshmark, even though we might be posting boots in winter, they don't get lost in or in uh, summer. They don't get lost in our inventory because we share our listings every single day, multiple times a day. So even if you have a pair of sandals that you list in 
December, and so maybe they don't sell it until July or something, they still look as a fresh listing on Poshmark because they're getting shared, if that makes sense. So you don't, have to, you don't need to, on Poshmark, worry about your non-seasonal inventory Items. getting lost because you're able to refresh it so easily. The next part of that conversation is during those summer months, let's say it doesn't sell, you're accumulating likes on that post on both Poshmark and Mercari. So you have all these people who are like, ooh, I like those winter boots, I'm not ready to buy now, I'm gonna like it, and then when it starts to snow and I need to buy it, you've already built up all of that, um, all those eyeballs on those things. So now your offer to likers looks really, really good as opposed to waiting to list until the winter. You've missed out on all that time to uh, gain the attention. Um, okay, so Jay Heelan said, I noticed sometimes people will list youth size under women and use the size conversion because it gets more visibility under that category. Thoughts? Question mark? Yeah, it's, it's something that we do all the time. Uh, youth to women's conversion. Here's a quick tip. Youth sizes and men's sizes are the same. It's the same exact shoe. So a youth seven is a men's seven. A lot of people don't know that. That same youth seven is also 99% of the time that youth seven is a women's eight and a half. You always got to look up the brand's sizing chart. You just do a simple Google Google search. For example, Keen, you look up, um, you know, just look up the sizing chart and it'll show you these, this is a men's, this is a youth, this is a women's. 99% of the time you add 1.5 sizes to that youth size to get the women's. So let's use Nike. A, a youth size seven Nike is a women's eight and a half, period. And yes, as the gentleman uh, said, the you, woman. as the woman okay. said, sorry. You do get exposure. There's more people searching for women's shoes than there is for kids' shoes. It's just the reality. So that same pair of shoes. Now, here is the bonus content. Here's the strategy. A lot of times when you go into the outlets, youth shoes cost less. So that's why we say buy youth six and youth seven because a youth six is a women's seven and a half. A youth seven is a women's seven and a half. You're still right in that sweet spot for the sizes that you most want to look out for, but now your buy cost is lower. So we don't have one here. For example, we pick up a ton of Nike Air Max in the outlets from the youth section in those youth six and youth seven and sell them as women's uh, Air Max. It's the same exact size shoe. I wish we had a universal across the globe uh, size, but it's literally the same exact size of shoes. Now there are some unique brands that we, that's why we say 99% of the time. So that's why it's important to look up where it might be two sizes bigger or for whatever reason, um, you know, Converse comes to mind. Sometimes it's two sizes bigger, like a, a youth size or a men's size might be uh, two sizes smaller, but always double check with the brand. You, got me boxes. you need boxes. Three. Three boxes. Three boxes. Um, next thing we want to show you is, is this pair of, this is a pair of Keen, but this is steel toe. You can't tell from, uh, just looking through the video, but these are steel toe. Gore-Tex is gold when it comes to footwear. Waterproof is gold when it comes to footwear. Steel toe is gold when it comes to footwear. Most of the times when you come across, uh, heavy duty, steel toe boots or shoes you got to triple triple you always should be triple checking condition but sometimes when people donate them it's because they're not useful anymore but sometimes they are and they aren't overused i mean there's plenty of tread left there's plenty of life men's women's this is actually a women's pair we actually have really good luck with women's um steel toe i think maybe they're harder to find yeah. in women's sizes um so sometimes we'll find like we're talking about with youth um, we'll find like men's sevens or men, even men's eights in steel toe and we, we might list them as a women's eight and a half or a women's nine and a half, whatever the equivalent is, uh, because women are looking for steel toe shoes as well. Yeah. Steel toe shoes, steel toe boots. Um, and usually those, those types, uh, that type of footwear has a high retail for obvious reasons. There's more going into the shoe. Next uh, brand we have here, we have two pairs left. This is an Asics. Uh, we sell a ton of Asics. This is the GT2130. Uh, on most Asics, on the back heel, or again, or on the tongue, you can find the style. If for some reason you can't, you look up on the inside tag, the style code. Oh, 
Toya just sent a dollar ninety nine. Hey, -o, Toya! Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Toya. Really appreciate that. Yeah. I was sending you my best. Hopefully, you are staying healthy and happy. Thank you so much for the super chat. Um. Uh, so. Enrique said, in addition to the youth sizes, do you list them as a seven wire? Do you list them as a women's eight and a half? So the biggest thing, and I don't know if we just said this earlier, is in your description, you need oh, to yeah. be very clear about saying youth size seven fits women's eight and a half. And then we usually include a photo of the inside tag in the listing as well. So there's no confusion. And well, there will, though, there might be confusion. People might be like, wait, there are seven when you're putting eight and a half and you might have to reiterate your description um, of saying that they're, yes, they're youth seven, they fit a women's eight and a half. So make sure you put that in the description so that people don't get <clears throat> the shoes and be like, wait, what? Yeah. Uh, over communicating is always the best thing on uh, any of your listings now you did have a question about do we list them as both again the same thing with using multiple marketplaces if you're gonna list them as both which is a really good idea you can put up one listing uh, as a youth seven so it shows up in the youth category and then the same you can use the same photos and put it as a women's eight and a half uh, using the same photos and now it shows up in the women's category it gives you a better chance uh, that it's going to sell just make sure however you do it whether it's in your Google Sheets or in your listing create something that sh that tells you that you have to go and delete the other listing because if you don't keep track and you sell it as a women's eight and a half that youth seven listing is still up there now if you have done this multiple times tens and 20 30 40 hundreds of times and you don't delete that other listing. Now you have listings that are up there that aren't for sale. Hang on. So Gone Picking sent a five dollar super chat. Hey, -o. so much. Thank you, Gone Picking. So hi, uh, you guys uh, rock in this crazy world we live in now. Thank what you for do the you kind guys words. Do to, or recommend for shoe sanitation. So the best advice we can give you is source shoes that don't need a lot of cleaning. That don't uh, you don't have to worry about it. I know it sounds crazy. No, it's sanitizing like from. Oh. Yes. sanitizing during these trying times okay I thought you were talking about cleaning but also, and all that. Yes. <laughs> yeah so there's lots of different sanitizers that you can uh, use of course you know whether it's like sprays or wipes things of that nature we've tried uh, both and currently use both um, the time is a thing to saying. keep in mind let them know yeah so so you can like if you are ordering shoes online and you're worried about stuff coming into your house you can um, first of all you can wipe down the boxes the shipping boxes before they come into your house if you're worried about anything being on the box and then just leave them to sit um, again we don't we're not doctors or yeah anything. Um, but time is the best way and then obviously with shipping the shoes all of our um, shoes take more than two days to get to the buyer so by the time that two days is uh, up yeah, you should be good. And this is all information based on what's coming out from the CDC. This is all information coming out from USPS, like all that stuff. We're not health experts. Uh, we're absorbing all this craziness and, and adapting and making micro pivots, uh, being as healthy as we possibly, possibly can. Those are just some ways. Uh, but as always, you want to check with the health professionals to see what the best. And it seems like that is, is constantly changing as well. So stay up to date on that. Um, so, okay, so... Let me show you this pair real quick. Oh, this the is the last pair, and we're going to continue to answer your questions. A uh, pair of Nike slides. Uh, obviously, this is a pair of women's size 10. Uh, we're, sell we're starting to sell through all the slides that we have now that the warmer conditions are coming. I think off the top of my head, we only have Nike and Adidas slides, but uh, always check the comps. These are in amazing condition. Basically brand new. Um, <laughs> so... Ms. Angie's Nails said, one day, can you show us how you use Google Sheets for your inventory and what info you keep? Yes, we have actually already done that. We have both a YouTube video, which I believe is under the follow the flip section. Yeah, it's called follow the flip tracking your inventory, if you scroll down. And we go step by step how we input stuff into our charts, then also when a pair sells, how we transfer it to another chart. We have a video on it. Then we also have an Instagram post where we actually show a screenshot of our inventory sheet and show you exactly um, all the info that we put on it. Yeah, and what it comes down to, what you're, you're going to find in that video, we should, we, what you should definitely check out is we create sheets that work best for us and it's constantly changing. 
the more that you keep track of the better but there's some stuff that you over time you might realize i don't need x y and z currently we keep track of obviously the brand the style the size the colorway um that's because we have 1900 pairs of shoes up here in our sneaker loft we also keep track of buy cost we keep track of how much we get back after all the fees and over the i think it's over the last six or seven months we started keeping track of what type of sale it was yeah was it uh an offer to likers that was accepted did we negotiate in that offer was it a full price that they just bought outright and we're keeping track of all that information and where it sold and where it sold did it sell on poshmark and mercari and we're, we're seeing uh, trends in how we are as resellers we're seeing trends in for example 80% plus of our sales come from either an offer to likers or some kind of negotiation mm. uh, some people have built their entire business around only accepting what they have listed the the pair for we realize that we giving a little room to negotiate allows for more sales to come in now we always keep keep in mind what our buy cost is and what our profit goals are and manipulating to what the market is telling us, always, always respecting Did the market. Did you also say on our master um, sheet, we keep track of when we got the pair? So we keep track of the date that we brought the pair into our inventory um, because then if we look at it and someone, you know, sends an offer <clears throat> that doubles our money, but, you know, our goal, our ultimate away. goal is, oh, sorry, is to, you know, triple, quadruple our money. We'll look at our chart and easily be able to see, oh, wait, we got this three months ago. Yes, maybe we'd like to just double our money. Um, so knowing exactly how long you've had inventory has been huge for us uh, to make sure we're moving it quickly and to be like, whoa, what the heck? We've had this pair for four months, five months. Maybe let's rethink getting these in the future. Leapfrog our mistake. We didn't do that in the first, I would say, even in the first year. We didn't keep track of exactly when we got it. And it's as easy as adding an additional column in your Google Sheets. Mm -hmm. Again, we do we do it by every seven days. It's not yeah. it's it's literally not like every single day. It's okay, here's all the pairs that we brought in this week. All the pairs for this week get the same date. And then as Lindsay said, we can monitor that and make decisions based on offers. Uh, as they come in do what works best for you and continue to grow upon that what what works for us may not work for you and what works for you may not work for us but what's important is to evaluate how you are building and then stop being romantic to what is not working i don't know this is a pet peeve uh that we have someone will reach out and be i'll just use this as an example Mar this marketplace sucks i hate it uh you know the x y and z is happening um, and then we'll say, okay, well, here's a different marketplace that's working best for us and here's why it's working. Tr feel free to try it out and see what works for you. And then a month later, they'll message us and say, this marketplace sucks, blah, 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 and sales sucks, and it's the same exact thing. You, you, you can't complain and keep doing the same exact thing and expecting it to be different. You either figure out why it's not working on that marketplace and improve because there are people that are winning on that marketplace or you change and use a different marketplace. Yeah. It's as simple as that. Bye, Phoenix Bookers. All right, guys, we're going to wrap up. 112 of you on here, 100 plus. Thank you so much for your time and attention. Whether you're on with us now or you watch this a little bit later on, uh, give us some feedback on this type of video. We appreciate your time. We, we want to give you as much value as we possibly can for a bunch of different reasons. One, we want to, when the world opens back up we, and it, it's healthy enough, we want to bump into you. We want to respectfully, maybe we'll give you an elbow bump instead of a high five because we probably won't be uh, high fiving people or shaking hands and all that in, in the new world that we live in. But we want to meet people as we're out and about, whether it's uh, virtually or out in the real world, and build relationships. We want to share with you what's working for us so you can leapfrog some of the mistakes that we have made. Because I'll tell you what, there is enough shoes on this planet and there's enough marketplaces to sell those shoes for all of us to get our piece of the pie so you're not going to hurt our business if you either replicate our business if you adapt what works for you based on some of the things that we do and maybe even improve upon that you're not going to hurt our business uh, but continue to share what is working for you continue to share your wins let us know where you're checking in from you guys can't see it but we got the pup at our feet uh, the three of she us. She always sneaks up when we go live. Yeah. She knows we can't like call her out. She likes to be, yeah, she's not allowed <laughs> up here in the sneaker <laughs> yeah. loft, but she is right at our feet right now and she likes to be close to us at all times. 
It means the world to us, guys. Thank you so much, Adventures with R&J. Oh, these are so nice. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Richardson. Appreciate you, my friend. Let's put our masks on and go to the Timothy Doyle, yeah. <laughs> the only time we get out is uh, actually now there's the only time we get out is to go to the post office because yeah. uh, we get the groceries delivered. But uh, guys, there's some crazy stuff going on in the world. You still can build a profitable business. Can't wait for it to open back up, but stay healthy, stay hungry. And until the next video, we hope you enjoy each and every single step, no matter where you are on your adventure. We'll talk to you guys soon. Hey, you gotta stop it over there. Yeah! <laughs>